Hi, I'm Glenn Huey, Senior Editor with Popular Woodworking and Woodworking Magazines. In the Autumn 2009 issue of Woodworking Magazine, we describe the process for making breadboard ends with a router. In the August 2009 issue of Popular Woodworking, I built a blanket chest and used this technique on the chest lid. Breadboard ends are a great way to keep large panels flat. They're great for working with tabletops and also with large chest pieces. So come on in, take a look, and I'll show you the layout and the process to make, cut, and form this whole joint with your router. Now on the actual breadboard end, you want to create the groove at the table saw that corresponds to the thickness of your tenon. The long tenons then fit into the mortises. Lay out and mortise those whatever way you normally mortise. So what's interesting about this joint is we're going to come in with a shop made tool, actually two pieces of plywood for a straight edge, and use the bearing to create the two rabbits that will form the tongue in the center. Then we're going to do the layout work which is described in the article in Woodworking Magazine. Make a couple saw cuts here and there, but the interesting part of this whole deal is we're going to take a piece of shop scrap, lay it down, and let our bearing run right along that edge to clean out the area in between the two tenons. The first step to make the breadboard tenon is to lay off the length of the tenon itself. I set a marking gauge up and roll down both faces of the board, creating the line on both sides. Then I've taken a plywood jig that's just used as a straight edge. It's two thicknesses of plywood. That has to be set in conjunction with your router bit. And I've laid that right to the line, adding clamps to both sides. Now the setup of the router is rather important. This is a three-quarter inch pattern bit. This bearing rolls right along the fence edge. Wherever the fence is, the piece cuts. And what's interesting about this is the setup is made to cut a quarter inch down into the material, or by cutting on both sides, we leave a quarter inch tongue in the center with three-quarter inch material. Now, because the pattern bit is three-quarters of an inch wide, it will not cut the entire width of our tenon in one pass. So the operation is to start at the far end, climb cut as we come back, removing about a half inch of material, and then finish up with a cut and follow all the way through in a normal routing position to finish one half of the breadboard. Here's what it looks like. So what's important when arranging this layout on the opposite side is to make sure that your pattern just covers the scribe line. That's going to keep things lined up between sides and make sure that your breadboard goes on uh, flush at the, both the top and the bottom. A nice tip when you're doing the layout is to use the 3 8 inch wide scrap that you're going to use in the next operation to help do the line work. As you can see what I've got it placed here, I can come right down the edge of my ruler, right down along here, and make that back line. Now the next step is to take a saw and create a saw cut right along each one of these lines. The area that we have marked here in black is the area we're going to remove. Now because I have access to it, I'm going to remove the two end pieces with my saw. Now for the next operation, we need to adjust the router bits so the bearing hits on our scrap piece and cuts into our tongue area. The way this is going to work is I'm going to plunge in the cut right here next to the saw curve, travel across the cut until the waste material pops off as my router bit reaches the second curve. 
Another important thing is to keep all the pressure on your off hand. If not, the router tends to drift and droop and we don't want that to happen. So keep everything tight back here. Now the reason we want to do this cut is we have a nice flat area back here. If I was going to hand saw that, I'd have to worry about staying behind the line constantly because if I'm above the line, due to the layout of the breadboard part, it would interfere with the fit and not allow us a tight fit. Also, you see here, I've nicked the edge of our tenon just a bit. It's not a big concern. Don't let it bother you. It's going to be all hidden when it's done anyway. And you will have to take a uh, chisel or a saw and remove the corners from the rounded area where the router bit left.